friends, and welcome to yet another episode of Making Poor Decisions, where today I am going to be putting my all-time favorite mead, Helgen, into secondary. All right, so this is my absolute favorite mead that I have ever made, and I am so excited to be making Helgen 2.0. Now, if you're not familiar with the name Helgen, then obviously you've never played Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and then that's the town that basically gets burned down by the big baddie dragon Alduin in the very, very beginning of the game. Now, in the very beginning of the game, also, you meet this man named Raelof, and he talks about a childhood friend who makes this juniper mead there. And when I was originally making uh, mead, or at least when I first started making mead, I really wanted to make a gin-inspired mead. Um, and of course, juniper berries are the main ingredient in gin. There's a lot of gin botanicals. So I was playing around with a recipe that I was originally going to call gin Meadsley as a play on words from the Harry Potter series, but I also really wanted to make a Skyrim inspired mead. And there is a Skyrim cookbook where you can learn how to make a, hunt a hunting brew mead and you can learn how to make black briar mead, but I wanted to make something like Vlod's mead, but Vlod's mead is also really close to gin, so I came up with Helgen. And Helgen is a, basically just a gin-inspired mead with juniper berries, coriander seeds, cinnamon, ginger. And uh, originally when I did this, I used almond honey. I wasn't able to get my hands on almond honey at this time of year, so I used sourwood because that's what I had on hand. Now, I've never used sourwood honey before, so this is going to be the first time that I taste a mead, mead with it. Uh, now, I also was planning on testing the gravity in this video uh, but a little thing happened on the way out of the sanitizer fluid uh, if you've ever done home brewing before you're probably really familiar with this site uh, this is a smashed hydrometer unfortunately but the good news is I'm not bottling it today. I'm just putting it into secondary so I unfortunately cannot get a reading for you. Um, sucks. But it is what it is. It's fine. I'll get another one. They're relatively cheap. They're like eight, nine bucks, which is great because this is the second one that I put. But I can taste it. And all of my equipment, of course, has been sanitized with star sand and very hot water. So let's go ahead and give her a taste before we put her into secondary. Here. And on the nose, it's very honey forward, also very juniper berry. I think it smells a little bit different than I made last time, but that's okay. Because I used a different type of honey. And also, I'm not using my usual Glen Karen. This is actually a tasting glass that I got from White Bear Meadery in um, Minnesota. I travel a lot for work, and usually when I travel, I try to find a local meadery or a local winery when I'm visiting just to uh, do some little bit of research. And these people were so nice and they were so accommodating. Uh, so if you are in the Minnesota area, particularly near the St. Paul area, please do stop by White Bear. They're really, really good people. And they actually should have a new tasting room that should be opening up right around the time that I post this video. So without further ado, let's give Helgen a taste and see if she compares to my original brew. Ooh. So I, I don't know if I'd call her dry. I can't really tell without an actual reading. But I would say semi-sweet, maybe to dry. Definitely taste the juniper berries. Coriander seeds are in there. It's gin reminiscent, not as strong as a gin flavor that I had in my original mead. But I still really like this. And that sour wood gives it a really unique taste. Now, contrary to its name, sour wood honey is not actually sour. It's kind of more spicy. It has kind of like a cinnamony taste to it, which I did throw a cinnamon stick in here as well. So I thought it would pair well, and it really does. 
definitely tastes different than my original brew, but again, my other brew has been aging almost a year now, and this is two weeks old, so it's not gonna taste the same, but it still tastes really good. And if you are familiar with the game of Skyrim, you know that in the original game, or in the start of that game, it gets burnt down. Now I have here birchwood. Now if you're traveling throughout the game, you actually see a lot of birch trees, especially in the beginning of the game. Uh, but this birchwood is not on fire. And Alduin, being a dragon, set it on fire. So I thought, if I was to make a mead based on Helgen, it should be on scorched wood, or at very least scorched birch, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. I did this in my original mead, and I had a lot of people saying, eh, probably don't do that, but it actually turned out really, really good, so I'm going to scorch half of the stick here. I actually have three sticks. This is my favorite part of making this mead, by the way, is burning it myself. And I'm going to be right back after I have properly set each and every one of these birch sticks on fire. And I'm going to throw them in my sanitized carboy and get this original meat racked. Okay, so Alduin has come and freed the dragonborn and has properly burnt down Helgen. And hopefully I don't properly burn down my apartment. But the important thing is each of my birch sticks have been torched and just about ready to drop into my fermenter. This is the fun part. Now, so many people when I was doing this are like, don't actually set it on fire. That's not what you're supposed to do. You can actually buy wood that's already been burnt, but then I don't have to set anything on fire. And what's the fun in that? mixed around in my star sand, get all the embers out. See, there is a method to my madness. I'm not just an arsonist who likes to make alcohol, I also like science. So, let's go ahead and get this wrecked. Getting a little too antsy. All right, let's get this racked. Let's go. All right. And... All right. I'll be right back after this. Is... Oh, we can actually see some smoke. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I can see it coming up here. There's a decent amount of smoke coming up from it, probably because I just set a bunch of wood on fire and then poured alcohol on top of it. But hey, it's going to be delicious because it was last time. All right. Be right back. That's it. So I'm anticipating having around anywhere between 100 to 110 ounces at the end of the day. I'm going to let this age for about another two to three weeks or so. I have three sticks of mostly scorched birch wood in here. I believe Aldwin would have scorched them all the way, but I don't want to burn my fingies. So they are mostly scorched. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. I try to post every Sunday or Monday. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a great day and happy brewing.